Hello and welcome to today's video. We're going to dig into intake air temps or IATs and how they affect our 3.0T performance. Let's go. So first thing is, where are the IATs measured? There's the one sensor here on this side of the supercharger. And there's the other sensor. This is important because the air temp that is measured there is the air after it's flowed through the internal water to air intercoolers inside the supercharger. It's already been compressed, flows up, flows back down, and then it's measured after it flows across the intercoolers. So that tells us a few things. Feeling a hot air intake pipe is not an indicator of IETs. A hot air intake with no heat shield won't matter that much. As you can see, that's what I run. It doesn't matter that much because when you've got cool air coming in, flowing in through here, it's flowing across the pipe, cooling it, and it's also flowing in through the pipe, taking that heat as well. Yes, it's going into here, but then it's cooled as well. Heat shields are nice for blocking some of that radiant heat in the engine bay, and so that's key, is that knowing where the IETs are measured, we know that the supercharger cooling loop is the most important thing in keeping those temperatures down. These superchargers heat soak easily but when the car is running but stationary. That affects IATs. So the easy principle to prevent that is to have air cross the front heat exchanger <laughs> and the supercharger loop to be moving quickly. Highway driving is highly effective paired with the PWM wire on the CWA50 or 100 pump making sure that the pump is circulating the supercharger cooling loop at the max speed. Those two together, you'll have great IATs. We know where IATs are measured now, but how do we look at that data? They can be measured or looked at by uh, logging, which is my personal favorite, the P3 vent gauge, as well as the torque app. I think there's probably a few others as well. Those are the ones I'm familiar with. And here's the important part. If there's any improvement or detriment to the supercharger cooling system, it must be measured on the IET delta, say on a quarter mile run or a couple gear pull. You're going to take that starting temperature, it's going to heat up by the time when you let off, and it's going to have the hottest temperature. You're going to take that final temperature minus the beginning temperature, that there is the delta. If that gets better, as in the number gets smaller, then your supercharger cooling loop is doing a better job at managing your IETs. Something to note though, when you're doing like a, a roll, like a second to fourth gear pull versus a quarter mile dig, which goes from first all the way up to half a fifth in the ZF8s, the roll is actually gonna load up the car more than the quarter mile pass. So your IET delta is gonna look worse on a pull. After you've made a change to the system, it has to be consistent, you have to compare apples to apples. The ECU has built-in protections against high ATs. What will happen is the timing advance will be pulled if you hit 80 degrees Celsius and the supercharger bypass valve will open bleeding off the boost. And so that is why I really appreciate logging because I can see all of those things happening if my ATs were to get that high. What happens when we have hotter air going into our engine though? Say above 70 degrees Celsius, 158 degrees Fahrenheit, or even worse, 80 degrees Celsius and above 176 degrees Fahrenheit. The hotter air will vaporize some of the fuel in the cylinder because we have direct injection, making for hotter cylinder temps and causing pre-detonation. If we were using only port injection, this becomes even more harmful, but this is because the hot air has a longer contact time with the fuel before it reaches the cylinder. This effect mostly applies to gasoline files but still is also a factor in E40, but just less. E40 reduces this effect substantially, so in our tunes, the higher the IATs get, the more timing advance will just be dialed back. So when we have cooler air coming in, we have more knock resistance with the fuel not being vaporized. I just want to specify too, when I'm talking about cooler, I'm talking about 50 degrees Celsius, 60 degrees Celsius in the 60s. That's, yeah, that's okay still. Remember that final temperature? That's where you want your IETs to kind of end up at the end of the run. In the 70s, like you're starting to, you're gonna have that effect happening 
and you're not going to have the same timing advance being allowed by your ECU. Something else to note, if there's something happening after the air flows past those sensors, the ECU doesn't know that and can't take advantage of that. For example, water meth injection plates that go underneath the supercharger that when they're spraying they cool the air after it's already been measured. The flow of the air only goes one direction. Now that we understand we lose some of that safety factor with our fuel with high IATs, we should do our best to try and keep our IATs down in a nice healthy range before going full throttle. Thank you very much for watching. Hit the like and subscribe button. Check out the other videos. I hope you like this one. Stay tuned. Peace.